All right, guys, so today we're gonna to talk about some of my most impactful knives. And what I mean by this is knives that I think have made the largest impact on me as a knife collector slash knife user, lover, whatever you wanna call me. Some people just think I make a lot of stuff up and that's cool too. <laughs> All right, so let's jump into it. So first off, we're gonna have to talk about the Benchmade 550 Griptilian. And the reason why this one has to be talked about is this is my first like real actual step into EDC knives. Of course, I had like slip joints, Victorinoxes, stuff like that before this, but like my first actual proper EDC knife that was like refined, I think many would consider this at least kind of refined and uh, you know, like not upper end by any means, but like more than just a gas station knife, right? This is a like actual knife. So the full sized 550 Griptilian was my first real step into knives. Now I've spent a lot more time with survival wilderness blades. And so a lot of my inspiration ends up being drawn from that side of things. But when I first got into knives, I was very much like tactical, serrations, all the cool things that make your knife look cool is what I liked. So I liked blacked out blades, you know, green handle, combo edge. I thought it just looked really cool and it wasn't super useful. And so that's why I ended up changing things as I went along. But my first blade was the Benchmade 550. Now stepping over into the next two blades. The second ones are my first two knives that I would consider that were actually like really decent quality, really good knives. So this one unfortunately is not the original, but I originally had an all blacked out um, S30V Spyderco Paramilitary 2. And I no longer have that one, so I got this Paramilitary 2 as a kind of replacement many moons ago. It is actually pretty new to me. And so this one is a Color Shop exclusive. It's in Rex 45. It's definitely a little bit more premium than my last version, but it's still a Paramilitary 2. And this was a knife that, or rather that all blacked out version, was kind of what got me into collecting more expensive knives and really helped open my eyes to see like this is what an actual premium knife feels like and it you know is a very useful blade and holds an edge for a long time corrosion resistant it functions well you, know, you can flick it out with one finger close it with one hand you know very very functional and so in the same kind of way and once again because outdoor survival bushcrafting was very hard on my mind at the time I also got a D2 Adamus that was additionally all blacked out this is not the same one of course this is a newer automatic fully automatic um, Adamus that's in CPM crew wear not my favorite of knives but this essentially is a placeholder for the other full-sized Adamus that I had so Anyways, these two, the full-sized Adamus and the paramilitary two were kind of my first steps or foray into more expensive knives. Now the D2 um, Benchmade was arguably probably not the best, but it was really good. And I will say it was super, super tanky and overbuilt, similar to this one, but the access lock was actually very strong on the original D2 Adamus. So that is the kind of first to really like expensive, nice knives that I added to my collection. Now, after that, of course, if you grew up at the same time that I did, you would have undoubtedly seen makers such as Jason Browse, Michael Gavick, which we'll get into in a little bit, Smoke Eater, uh, I think it was 908, and others that I've mentioned in different podcast videos that I did with my friend. They were very heavy influences at the time on the YouTube spheres where I was watching and getting a lot of my knife ideas for content, and so that that predicated my next purchase um, for like pocket knives and the next kind of grail knife that I went after was the Chris Reeve knives Sabenza 21 or large Sabenza. Now, once again, similar to all the other knives uh, outside of the 550, this is not my original Sabenza or my first. My first was a all like plain Jane, just all titanium um, in single grind large Sabenza 21. And that was a really awesome knife, very pivotal. And it really was like an eye opener to see like what a high performance higher end knife was like once again not a custom not something that was handmade per se but still very high quality rather expensive especially for me at the time it was like a 400 dollars knife and uh, was once again definitely helping me get well into my love for expensive and really collectible knives so anyways this is a little bit different this is my micarta inlay large sabenza 21 but still a large sabenza 21 nonetheless and I love it for most of the same reasons. So anyways, that is the next impactful knife. 
All right, moving on from there, and it would be another few years later because I was buying a lot more outdoor, you know, survival blades, but the next kind of impactful EDC knife that I would get is the Benchmade 630. Now this is the original 630 that I got, and the 630 was one of those knives that even before I had gotten the uh, Sabenza, it was one of those knives that I saw online, and I was like, man, that thing looks really cool. And I didn't fully understand just how big this knife would actually be until I got it in hand, but I really did love the Neil Blackwood skirmish design. I thought it looked kind of futuristic, but at the same time timeless with a lot of its, you know, like sweeping designs and it's kind of just overall subdued elegance. Like in my opinion, it still is that way with like all these light, you know, machine holes and these little um, kind of holes right here that aren't really for lanyard. It's arguable, you know, there's a lot of holes in this knife, but I think it's, you know, reasonably subtle design characteristics that make it look very unique and very cool. Also, you gotta love Blackwood's kind of dragon um, logo or design. Hopefully you guys can see that. I love it myself, but uh, yeah. So that was the next one. The 630 was like my first real grail that I was actually able to get. So before, like I said, before even getting the, or before making the Sabenza a grail, I had made the 630 a grail. It was just a very hard knife to come by. So even if I did have the money, like trying to track down a skirmish was, and for the, for the fact of the matter, still is hard to do to this day. Day, so all right so now moving forward after the uh, skirmish or maybe before the skirmish I can't quite remember I got the Browse Blades Silent Soldier now this once again isn't necessarily an expensive knife this is probably the cheapest of the knives I've shown so far but the Browse Blades Silent Soldier was one of those blades that I really was drawn to because I thought it was wacky but still super practical and useful and also to Browse similar to Gavco we'll talk about in just a little bit um, was one of those really influential at the time knife makers and so you know he was one of those that was like a YouTube personality so he would talk a lot about knives knife design good you know blade materials heat treat all those kinds of things he brought that and kind of made it more understandable and so at that time you know it's like okay I want to support people like Jason Browse and so while I wasn't a huge fan of some of his other designs the Silent Soldier was very cool and I think ultimately the Silent Soldier is what he's best known for um regardless to whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. So that is the Browse Blades Silent Soldier. This is a V2 with a drop point, but uh, yeah. So that is the next one up. And like I said, it was really cool to get a knife from a smaller maker and um, you know someone who was influential on the knife YouTube side of things. All right, so all of these guys are recent additions, but I really wanted to complete my kind of trifecta. So at the time when I was growing up, um, the kind of trifecta or holy trinity of knives or knife makers were seen as Chris Reeve knives with the large Sabenza 21, Strider with their Strider SNG, and then lastly, hinder with the XM18 three and a half inch. So this was kind of like the trifecta, the holy trinity of the knives that if you were someone or anyone that was into high quality knives or had good taste, you would own at least one of these knives. So like I said, the next one up is the Strider SMG. I got this one because once again, I really do like Striders. They are kind of hard to find, but uh, they are overall really unique knives. Um, some people don't like the build quality. I think it's just fine. There's no like lock rock or anything in these they're great knives overall but uh lisa i really wanted to complete that holy trinity so i had to have an sng so that is how i ended up with the strider sng all right last one up for the holy trinity is the hinder xm18 now to be completely fair i did already own the three inch xm18 but because that was a uh, as far as like the grand scheme of things go, the kind of newer version, I really wanted to have the original classics. So the large Sabenza 21, the SNG, and the three and a half inch version of the Hinder XM18. So I ended up finding this guy. And not only do I just actually love this knife because it is super smooth, super flickable, and super like awesome in all of its ways, but it is also part of the Holy Trinity. And so I had to have it in the collection. So overall, that is the Hinder XM18, three and a half inch. Last up is the newest one, the newest edition, and this guy is pretty new to me, but it is the Gavco Knives 
nurse. And this is a, to be specific, XL nurse, and it's a hunchback because of this little back, or kind of hunch in the back of the handle. So overall, this one is one that is not only quite expensive, it's my only full custom in the roster, but it's impactful for that reason of it being a custom. But I think it's also impactful because once again, as I've said in different videos, Michael Gavick is one of those knife makers slash kind of knife influencers that if you are a part of the early kind of 2010s, 20 teens knife life on YouTube, you will have known him from making a lot of different videos in how to make Kydex sheaths, how to, you know, kind of like the back side of things of like making knives and uh, just kind of sharing, you know, their viewpoints on what quality knives were and, you know, kind of helping bring to bear things like I said, like bringing out saying like Chris Reeve and the Sabenza are really quality knives. And if you want a quality knife, you should go to these makers to find those quality knives. And so they were very influential to like me when I was getting into knives, kind of being like, this is what you want. This is what you want to stay away from. So kind of going full circle and actually ending up supporting those makers that, you know, contributed so much to the community as a whole is why I really think this knife is quite impactful. So anyways, that is the most impactful knives in my collection and overall hopefully you enjoyed this video i'm sure there were probably a few surprises in there but that is essentially the but those are essentially the most impactful knives in the collection as always guys god bless and i'm out